Oh, creating conflict. That is one of the things that if you're really good at what you do, you don't necessarily have to create conflict because you realize that it's always bubbling beneath the surface and you're just recognizing what's already there. If you aren't any good at storytelling, there will not be any conflict. Any really good story has something that the main character has to struggle with. It can be their social status. It can be their environment. It can be their own personal circumstances. Classic example is Cinderella. Her parents are dead and she's left with her evil stepmother and her wicked stepsisters and they mistreat her and she's got to deal with that and she has hopes and dreams of getting out of that into a better life. Frodo Baggins, he inherited his eccentric uncle's homestead and property and fortune and this one little ring that is going to bring about the complete destruction of the world if he doesn't do something about it. So he's got a major conflict. And once you realize when you're dealing with conflict, life is never so considerate and orderly and planned out that it will only send you one thing at a time. And when it sends you something, not only does it not send you one thing at a time, it will not always be one big thing. There's the old saying of, take up your cross and follow me. The Bible doesn't teach us is that quite often the cross is carried one splinter at a time. You know, everybody is willing to be the hero or the heroine and deal with this one big obstacle, this one big struggle, and we're going to break through it and end up in some blessed nirvana and it'll be all set. We will live our happily ever after. I've been around the sun 55 times. I've never seen that play out. And if you pay attention to the stories that you read, especially the good ones, Last of the Mohicans, uh, Lord of the Rings, any of the Agatha Christie, the main character has to deal with their main conflict, the main theme of the story. But then they've got a lot of other things, people that don't understand what they're doing. Why are you doing this? You know, that kind of bring about a lot of self-doubt, try to get in the way, screw things up. They don't necessarily mean to. They're kind of like that big St. Bernard that has the flashy tail that knocks everything off the coffee table and spills drinks all over the carpet and all sorts of other stuff. It's just really excited to see you, but it creates havoc. Sometimes their good friend, their assistant is that type of person who always means well, but he means well feebly and ends up causing more problems than he helps to solve. There's that conflict. What about their environment? Uh, the Old Man in the Sea, Ernest Hemingway's book. That's a great example of conflict. You know, he's got the conflict of being old, of being surpassed by other fishermen and other fishing boats that are more fancy, more expensive, can do a little bit better. And then he gets out there and he catches this absolute prize sailfish. But in his struggle to get the fish, he's now dragged way out to sea and he doesn't know where he is and he's got to figure out how he's going to get home. He's found this one fish that's going to make his reputation. There isn't anybody to see it. And he doesn't know how he's going to get back to show anybody. And so then he's dealing with that. And while he's overcoming that, he notices that all the sharks and all the other fish in the sea are taking bites out of this big prize fish that he wants to get back home so he can show everybody. So in addition to keeping himself alive, He's got to try and preserve this fish that he has tied to the side of the boat. It deals with all that. And then he gets home. He finally gets back to home port. And he's just too exhausted. He leaves what's left of the fish tied to his boat. 
He grabs his oars. He's too weak to even carry it. And now he just wants to get home and get into bed. And so there's this fellow dragging his oar over his shoulder through the streets of the town like Jesus carrying his cross. And that's a perfect example of your conflict coming at you one splinter at a time. He had all these big things that he thought were going to be his goals, and he had to meet them. He had to deal with them. And each one opened up a new conflict, a new obstacle to be overcome, a new challenge to be faced. And if you're really good, that's what it's going to be about. And if you don't believe that, sit and take a look at your own life. Your alarm clock doesn't go off, so you are now running late, getting ready for work, getting the kids ready for school, getting to this appointment, doing whatever. In your rush to get out, you forget to gas up the car. You forget to stop at the bank to get some money. You now run out of gas or you can't find a parking space and you're late and now you're behind and your boss is upset and you forget to go grocery shopping and you have to make up your time so you're late getting dinner started. You never have just one thing come at you. You want to create conflict in your story? You can let life imitate art or you can let art imitate life.